Work for it, Europe, baby. Let's go. Episode three. What's going on with Matt this week? I'm good, man. Right, right on time as usual. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what twenty minutes this time, man? Just twenty minutes. Just yeah. twenty minutes. Well, actually, you're a day in twenty minutes. We were supposed to record this <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> But that's all right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. No the problem. Life. Apparently, you don't uh, listen to your wife when she tells you stuff. It's the same thing for me. Yeah. Well, if I start listening to my wife, I, I would, I would not even be on on this podcast at all. So, she's jealous of you, Keith. I've taken too much of her time away from you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. How you be, man? I'm doing all right. I had a big, big order this week of G10. I got like 900 kilos coming in again. That's always exciting. Whoa! Get all that stuff put away and cut up, and I. Uh, 900 kilos? Yeah, 900 kilos. I get that like stuff giant, doesn't weigh anything, right? Oh, it's heavy. It's like a giant. Oh. So the sheets are the same size as a regular Euro pallet. Oh, oh, okay. But that's still a lot, man. It's a lot. That's yep. a lot. You move moving numbers. How, how long does that last? Uh, I do a order like that, like once a year. Oh, like 900 okay. kilos. Look at you. It's just easier. And you get yeah. a better price when you buy more. The, obviously. The bad part is if you run out of one color, then... Yeah, you, people got to wait for it, and I, I don't like people waiting or they'll go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, they don't go to me. You don't have G10. Nope. No. Yeah, I also got a, uh, I got a, ordered a couple of things this week. I kind of hurt my hand. Uh, I, you know, I, I do air conditioning repairs and stuff like that, and I yeah. was installing an AC unit. And there's like this thing called a manifold gauge that you can read the pressures mm -hmm. with. It's got like the yellow, red, and blue hoses on it. And I was yeah. unscrewing the manifold gauge and it kind of got stuck and it was spraying refrigerant all over my hand, which is like freezes you instantly. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a frostbite nice. or a, bur a burn. So my index finger and my thumb, my left hand are like all blisters. So I didn't get much done in the shop. So I spent money. I ordered a, a laser Pekka 3. Oh, I can do some laser Lord. engravings. That's and good to know. do you know what the VersaFlow is? It's like a yeah, a mask. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah for grinding. I, yeah, so I ordered like the knockoff. It's called uh, Vario Protect, and it was it's like three hundred and eighty bucks, but it looks exactly the same. I think even yeah, the batteries and everything are the same. It works. It works. Yeah. So I've been wanting one of those for a while, but Very didn't want to nice. spend spend a thousand dollars on it. Okay, man. Sounds good. So, what about you? Is, what? Is, the hand, is, is the hand looking bad? Uh, it's getting better. It just looks like like frostbite, kind of. It's I mean, it's not nice. black. <laughs> you should <laughs> always send me pictures of stuff like that. I love it. If I sent you a picture of my bruised up, like blistered finger, you, I don't know if you would know what it was. <laughs> Are you left or right handed? Uh, I do a lot of things left-handed, but I write right-handed. Oh, you only write right-handed. Yeah. What What about like, the other thing? You gotta switch that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cheating, yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, uh, is that it? You're weak? You did nothing but come in late today? Oh, no, <laughs> no I did a lot of shit. A lot. I, I, I actually made some, uh, some some content around the Apollo, yeah. Which uh, which I made a reel about it, and it, it instantly I love that man. I just I don't post a lot, N not as nearly as much as I as, as I should, but whenever I do, it just instantly translates the sales. Right. I don't know why I didn't see any of those. I didn't see that post. What? You got shadow banned. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> For being so obnoxious no it was very cool i it's i always brian is awesome with that because he always lets me uh uh like use him as a how do you say that in english like 
the reel is also his. Yeah, you guys cross cross promoting. Yeah, it's just you can you can um, it's like a, like a contributor on on the on the reel, and then it reaches all of his audience as well, which mm -hmm. is ginormous and it yeah, helps a lot. It helps a lot. Yeah, and uh, just, just today was crazy. It was like uh, it's only three orders, but three big 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 ass orders today. Yeah, which is. Uh, like I don't know. Do you have like lots of small orders or? Um, in the beginning, it was lots of like small stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but I mean, I only had hand material, pretty much like G10 and micarta. Oh, yeah. So, so my my smallest orders are are actually uh, Gator Piss. Yeah. Okay. Anything else is is either uh, maybe the, uh, leather plants, is, is something like that. But usually they they all buy like like more. They they order a motor and plants and you know like that. Yeah. So every order is is it's always a bigger one. Yeah. So Which it's a lot of work. Even though you got yeah. only three orders, you still got all that work to package it all up. Yeah. And there's one guy today that ordered a revolution and then everything that you can get with that. A true to the motor, the wheels, the, the the entire package, which is great. Nice, nice. So we got kind of a little bit of a different episode this week. We actually have a guest with us. Yeah, and he's fucking from, famous. From Poland, he's got like almost ten thousand followers. So uh, his name is Pavel Suedo. You guys might know him on Instagram as Paps Tomahawks. Pavel, how's it going? Hello guys, thank you for having me. How was your week this week? What were you up to? Well, busy as always, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, well, I'm forging Damascus this week, so I spent a lot of hours with the forge, so pretty, pretty tired uh, at the end of the week, but yeah, great. <laughs> Aren't you forging Damascus every week? No, <laughs> oh, definitely no? not. No, no, I'm kind of, I cannot say new to Damascus, but... Uh, Shut my... the fuck up, you're not new, <laughs> that can't be. <laughs> yeah, but for many years I just avoided this topic. I get frustrated every time i done some Damascus, and when I did it, I made some mistakes, trash it, and then I had like half a year of uh, gap between another uh, Damascus project, so... Well, yeah, Damascus looks like you've done it for 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 centuries. Yeah, right now, but uh, I spent a lot of time and, uh, and I trash a lot of steel for for for, for that <laughs> to be where I am now. But I still use uh, uh, Damascus that I bought from uh, uh, Holland from. Uh, oh, Martin. Or, yeah, exactly. M is it uh, MVH Damascus? MVH Damascus, right? I awesome, awesome made stuff. one right now uh, from his uh, Damascus, but I think I'm gonna use him more. <laughs> He's just yeah, better he makes, than that. Yeah, he makes awesome stuff. Yeah, 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 and he likes it. I hate uh, to to cut the small plates for for Damascus and preparing the billet. It takes me. Ages to, to just prepare the huge billet for uh, for the tomahawk. Hmm. Yeah, it's a so pretty I big billet. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna stick to the simple Damascus, like the one with the very easy uh, stacked uh, layers, uh, and uh, the, the more elaborate I'm gonna order from Martin. Hmm. Yeah, you have you have one uh, that you just put up like two weeks ago. With the purple curly maple handle on it, looks like um, yeah. like low layer Damascus with kind of like the side view of it. You can see it how it was stacked. Yeah, that's 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 mine Damascus, right? Mm -hmm. That's your go-to pad in there. Yes, because uh, yeah. it's one of the easiest one to make, and mm -hmm. also if you stack layers like this, uh, when you drift the eye of the tomahawk or of the axe, it's less prone to break. So and to sort the pattern, yeah, the pattern looks uh, really good on on the tomahawk. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. I... It's pretty elegant when you do this, uh, like twenty five layers, but 
I like it. I like it very much. Yeah. I love it, man. It's sometimes so beautiful. Uh, when I started with Damascus, I w wanted to go big, I was doing like billets f with uh, 300 layers, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look so good on the Tomahawk, <laughs> really. No, I think the surface is too big. Yeah, yeah, surface too big. Uh, layers are too thin in the yeah. uh, in the end, so. So I switched to this this pattern, and I think it's yeah. it's yeah. pretty pretty good. More robust patterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bold. So when you're stacking the steel to make it, are you using um, thicker steel than you would for a knife, then, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use uh, three three and a half millimeters uh, layer of of, of mm -hmm. the steel. I can't get enough of look. I I had the f I I don't know if you remember, but no, I don't think you do, but. Maybe I saw your and I held your axes at uh, the Dutch knife expedition yeah. Yeah. last year, and then we got to talk in when you ordered Gator Piss. Yeah, the Gator Piss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was okay. debating myself uh, if I should buy the Gator Piss mm -hmm. uh, because, frankly, it's pretty expensive for me. It in is. Poland. It yeah, is but pretty expensive. It, it's a game changer for me, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Uh, I was struggling good. with uh, with getting the layers uh, with a coffee edge. Mm -hmm. I was doing the chloric ferrite, uh, ferric chloride uh, yeah. etching, and then the coffee edge. And sometimes it was it was taking me like three days to get the right crisp uh, contrast on this. With Gatepris, it's couple of minutes and it's it's done okay it's, uh, so what's your what's your uh, process using using the gate piss how do you go through the different um so what's my process uh, regarding yeah. the finish of the tomahawk yeah you're mm -hmm. asking for this yeah yeah uh i doing like uh 800 uh, uh grid paper mm -hmm. uh, on the belt grinder then I go to hand sanding and I go back to 600, then 800, 1000, 1200, and uh, <laughs> buffer finish. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah, it's tricky for the Tomahawks, uh, it, for the Damascus Tomahawks, because there are very m too much of, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, surfaces. Like yeah, different surfaces have, and lines and yeah yeah on the knife it's easier you have two flat surfaces and mm -hmm. and, and a grind with tomahawks you have a lot of different uh, parts that need yeah, to yeah, be yeah. equally uh, polished and, and grinded and when you when you do the pipe tomahawks so you, that's all in uh, etched inside there too uh no uh, well Initially yes, but I then uh, polish it to to to, to with, with a buffer to just mm -hmm. clean it up after the acid, because I don't want to send something with uh, uh, acid residuals inside the the pipe, right? Yeah. So yeah. I just clean it. Mm -hmm. Nice. How many uh, how many dips do you need to do in? Do you get a, like a really deep edge on it with the gator piss? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I believe that the deeper edge is better for for the tomahawks, and I do uh, two session of twenty five minutes uh, mm -hmm. with uh, polishing uh, on the buffer in the middle. Yeah, you polish so you polish all the black out before the final edge, and then... yes, yeah. yeah. Nice. It's faster than with coffee. <laughs> with coffee, there's mixed results. So I've never heard anyone not being uh, being happy with Gator Piss. Some use it like as an add-on after their normal etching cycle. Yeah. But um, like I've never had a complaint ever. Yeah, as I said, that's a game changer for me. <laughs> yeah, the boys at Baker Forge did a hell of a job on that one. So how did you get uh, in Pol from Poland to making like uh, American Indian style tomah tomahawks? <laughs> That's... 
you, you want the full history of it? <laughs> Let's hear it. Uh, when I was a kid, I loved to throw axes into uh, into the target. Mm -hmm. But back then, that's, there was no uh, tomahawks available to purchase in Poland. Uh, so I used the market uh, access for that. But I always wanted to have tomahawk. And uh, maybe like 20 years ago, my brother started to forge uh, swords, katanas, uh, knives and other stuff. And he made me uh, tomahawk for, uh, I don't know, it was probably uh, my birthday or, or something like this. Mm -hmm. And I was hooked. Uh, it was f far more better than, than every axe uh, I had. So I tried to, to, to make one myself. And <laughs> I'm doing it ever since. So, yeah. You're, you're doing it full time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. like 11 years of the full time right now. 11 years? You've been doing it yeah. full time? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, I was on the mm, on the Polish knife show uh, last month, mm -hmm. and there was a customer who had like my third tomahawk I ever made. Came oh, wow. with, with it, and he said it was made 15 years ago. So I can say that I am doing this for 15 years now. He brought it with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to make my uh, maker's mark on it because back then I didn't have my uh, my stamp, so he asked for it. That's like antique now. I'm sorry. That thing is antique now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's antique. It's vintage. So, so when you look at that, like, uh, what do you think of it? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> After. It's it's a long road. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think but also uh, it's very small and compact I, I this comparing to the ones I make today it's like mini tomahawk and I wonder why I'm making it bigger and bigger uh, I need to go back to the basics and make very small tomahawks <laughs> honestly I, I mean there's something to be said for both I think you got uh, you got a lot of um, very intricate engraving on some of the tomahawks. Are you doing yeah. engraving work yourself, also? Or? No, no, no. I'm not that skilled. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm working with uh, Barbara Malinowska, uh, Malba engraver from uh, from from Poland, obviously. Uh, very near me. We we met uh, a couple of years back. And we started some first projects together. So then awesome. I, I must say it's very nice cooperation for me because it's demanding. I need to give her very good finish on, on, on the tomahawk with very flat surfaces. Oh, yeah, before uh, he can do his, um, his magic. Yeah, yeah, her's magic. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. And then we go to... Uh, my another friend who makes the letter work for it, so it's like three makers combo uh, at the end. Did I just misgender someone? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But uh, in Poland, it's not a crime yet. So no, <laughs> let's keep it like that, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm beginning to love Poland more and more. Yeah, actually, me too. <laughs> yeah. The, the more I hear about the U.S. The rest and, of the world. And, and the wet world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. There was we a some... political shockwave in, in Holland this week. We're going, uh, we're going the Polish route now. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. But... Polish or maybe Donald Trump style. <laughs> yeah, no. well, the backlash is the same. It's... it's... Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's the same everywhere. Yeah, actually, we uh, have election uh, two months ago, mm -hmm. uh, and we kind of divert from this this road. <laughs> oh, really? 
yeah 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 you have like a more left leaning yeah yes more pro uh, european oh uh, yeah party but we... who's that guy that's like on like like very going very viral everywhere he's always talking about how great poland is and um i don't know his name but you see him everywhere on the internet now is it from poland yeah i think he's like in the in the maybe it's somewhere in the european what's it called like in brussels uh he's always talking about that everyone's attacking him that poland is uh, like racist and i don't know whatever and uh, he's always defending it very um, honestly i don't know who we're talking about because it, obviously we see different movies on the youtube so i don't know what is presented to you <laughs> yeah obviously i i don't know what his name is but i thought he was like some opposition leader or maybe the yeah maybe minister. donald tusk uh donald tusk is uh, will be future uh, prime minister in poland yeah and he was uh in EU, uh, in uh, oh, council, head of the council. Say something, Keith. <laughs> I know nothing about politics, so that's why I'm quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we so don't I... have to talk about the politics. We... No, it's, uh, it's I have just... enough for, for it. It's, uh, I, I like the Polish way, obviously. Yeah, it has some upsides. Uh, no, it has downsides. Obviously, but I mean, every, yeah. everything has up, ups and downs. But um, the, the way Poland is is being um, like uh, like it's being shown in the media is not at, at least that's what I think. It's not that's not what Poland is all about, from my understanding. Well, I remember when I was on the. Um, show in belgium a couple of years ago mm -hmm. uh, and we were eating breakfast in the hotel and there was a bbc uh, uh hmm. in the tv and uh, uh, the show in belgium is in uh, 11th of november usually and it's our polish national day and yeah. in poland national day is pretty pretty big uh, uh, pretty big uh, uh day for us and we have marches in uh in warsaw there's a march there's uh like uh, 200,000 people on the streets mm -hmm. with flags and it was portrayed in the bbc as uh you know nazi uh, right wing uh, nazi yeah, yeah 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 and in they, fact, they literally uh, make you make you guys look like you're all like skinheads and stuff yeah is... exactly <laughs> and there was plenty of, uh, of uh, families with children on, on this march mm. so yeah and i was like shocked really that this this is how they think we are <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's pretty yeah. crazy it's the guy's name was dominic tar Tarsinski. Dominic Tarzinski or something. Oh, I honestly don't know who he is. I'm gonna Google it later. I think he's just, uh, an, uh, it's probably just an Instagram thing then. Maybe, yeah. Good, good for the reels. And Matt's gonna Google BBC later because he's, he's thinking something <laughs> yeah. completely different. <laughs> <laughs> why, do you think, why do you think I was 20 minutes late, man? Yeah, uh, uh, and I'm gonna Google how to make good reels because I'm suck at this on, on the Instagram. So <laughs> I really need to step up my game with reels. Just copy what the other people do. It's easy to say, you know. I, I know what I want to show, but I know, don't know how to do it on my uh, telephone and computer. I just you and need I an don't app for that. Yeah, and I need a camera in my workshop, and my workshop. It's very, very small and Yeah, you told like, me this. I was, I was stunned by how yeah. small your workshop is. Yeah. Yes, it, I mean, it's your, actually... Your pictures uh, are really great. Your picture quality is yeah. awesome. Are you taking your own yeah. pictures? Yeah, I'm taking my own pictures with, with old camera and on the window uh, with natural, na, na, natural light. Mm -hmm. I like doing pictures and it was... It's something that brought me to Instagram. Good pictures of, of, of the products. 
and now I need to be a f movie maker to to have some uh, likes under my uh, <laughs> reels or, or, or photos. Yeah. That curly maple is sometimes really hard to uh, to get a good picture of. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I used to send my customers a movie with a uh, handle because it's better to show uh, how it changes with uh, light. <laughs> yeah, so you probably notice I love to use curly maple. <laughs> where are you getting curly maple that big? I need some. Uh, I ordered it from US, from Dunlop Woodcrafts, from uh -huh. Daniel Miranda. Very great guy with a lot of nice handles. And they're all stabilized when you get them in that size? No, no, no. I don't stabilize, no, stabilize, no stabilize. Uh, wood for, okay. for... No. It's actually counterproductive to have stabilized uh, handle for axe or tomahawks because it will be too stiff and too prone to crack. Oh, yeah, it'll break, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And it will be too heavy in that size. Your reels with, uh, with gator piss are doing pretty good. Yeah, they're gonna do more of that. I would like to make some reels with uh, every step of tomahawk making from from scratch. You know, you know what you need to do? You just need to invite um, Baker Forge and Tool as a go. Uh, um, I still don't know how, to, Mr. American. Tell me how I say that in in English. Uh, co author or called. something like this? Yeah, it's like when you co create or. Whatever you can just add them as a like don't yeah I can them, do but, that yeah you can do that with uh, with Baker Forge and maybe they'll uh, they'll accept okay thanks yeah I think when you yeah. I I don't know exactly what it's called but when you when you post something you have the option to and like when you tag somebody you can add them as I don't yeah, know a paid 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 partner or a co creator or something yeah something like that okay thanks for the tip I didn't oh. know how how it works so I need to look into that. I definitely so Matt, need some new uh, new audience because I think I'm running on shadow ban for like two years now. So you make very dangerous weapons, Mister. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. And yeah, Matt does that with um, Brian House, right? And you were talking yeah. about that earlier. Yeah, I'm leeching on him all the time. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, I do sell this stuff, so it's kind of kind of fair. But like, yeah. he doesn't have to do it, but he does it all the time. He always accepts it. And... That's good for him too. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's just you got to do it so many times, and just one of them is gonna explode. And... So, what kind of uh, tools you got in your shop? What do you, you got? A power hammer, or what are you using to? Make yeah, I have a tomahawks. power hammer. Two hydraulic presses, uh, and of course two anvils and countless hammers uh, to, to, to forge, and a couple of green grinders, and that's pretty much all. I don't have more room for next uh, machines in my workshop. I need to build something from scratch. So Matt, shut your headphones off right now. Uh, are you related to the, the Polish guy who makes grinders, Pavel grinders? Uh, no, not related. Uh, I know uh, know him from the uh, shows, but I don't have uh, his uh, grinder. Oh, which grinder do you have? Uh, I have the Gosset. Uh, it's oh, another yeah. Polish uh, uh, grinder maker. Polish? Yeah, oh, actually, it's a yeah. Gosset Pro or something, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, they're very professional. They are Polish, but they have a lot of uh, Europe d distributors, as yeah, I far so. as I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, th those are nice stuff. If you I can't complain. Consider taking and uh, taking on another grinder. Yeah. Talk. <laughs> uh, I probably should because the grinder I, I have are pretty much uh, torn up already. Say no more, I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely need to uh, make some upgrades in the workshop. Mm. I see young, young knife makers in Europe or US with this 
spectacular workshops and I, I envy them, <laughs> really. Uh, yeah, but then again, if you look at what you're making with your workshop, then yeah. I think that's... Yeah, at some point it's just a matter of how uh, how comfortable is your work uh, on these machines, right? So yeah, it's Efficiency. not the yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Matt's got some. Uh, you got some new products coming out for your grinder, right? Or do you not have them yet? Oh please, which ones are you? Uh... You got the small wheel attachment. Oh my! God, I don't want to talk about it. Come on, it's, it's it'll fine. come in. It, it'll come on uh, in in the next uh, skit we're doing. I'll talk about that. Uh, should we fire off that skit? Or? Yeah, go go for it. Welcome to Wanker of the Week. 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 My Wanker of the Week, and I love him to death. But it's Mister Brian House himself. Well, what did he do now? What did he do now? Look, <laughs> he, it, like, ever since he's he, he has like uh, 900 people working for him now, and even before that, it was it was it was not even do, doable to to keep up with him. But like now, I I'm, I'm I'm all proud of myself. Like I finished this 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 forge, and it's almost ready to go. And then I just keep looking at him, and he's like, "There's now the the drill press table. There's the." Um, what's the thing? Uh, the, the small wheel attachment. Uh, now he's already hinting to to another uh, grinder upgrade. It's just I can't I can't keep up. <laughs> Even if I would go like full time for GOI Europe in on my own, I wouldn't I, w I wouldn't be able to keep up with that. It's insane. Which sounds like a bit bitchy, but it sounds like good business. Brian House. <laughs> That's it. Uh, this is the last episode. We are canceled. <laughs> We're. <laughs> no, I love him, and he. I think he'll. He'll. Uh, I mean, it's it's a good because it's just like leader fault. You can't keep up with that guy, and and he's always. Um, because I I knew these things would would come out. I didn't know when exactly, but I knew that they were coming, and it's just it's just not doable to to, to keep up with that. It's it's crazy. Like he makes those those um, those small wheels attachments, and he does it differently than everyone. Like it looks the same, but it's not the same. The rubber he's using is not. I I don't think it's even. It's, it's more of a plastic. It's like the harder rubber, mm -hmm. and the way he has them made over there, I I obviously have to do the same thing, and that'll take me like forever to find someone who's willing to do bad hair and. I got a guy for you. Um, I hope so. Yeah, we'll talk later. I yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to to tell like exactly how he's how he's doing it, but we'll uh, we'll do that after hours in the after show yeah. that we're not making. I like not not yet. We only got three people, mm. three people that are uh, on Patreon yes. right now. Oh. But it's good. Three yeah. three is good. Uh, I like the the big appearance he's using. I went through. I had uh, one from another company, uh, and it was probably my fault running them too fast. But the barons didn't last very long at all. They just uh, yeah. They soon can. as they as soon as they got bad, they started to eat 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 at the uh, wheel itself, and then you couldn't even put different barons on it because the wheel was all screwed up. Yeah, it's annoying. And I'm always wearing headphones, so if it starts making noise or squeaking, squealing or anything, I don't hear it, and then it was too late. Yeah, new bearings incoming. So I'm, I'm, my, I'll, 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 yeah, I'm gonna make have to make haste with uh, with that one because it, there's a high demand for that over here. Definitely. Yep. Yeah, my wanker of the week is care. not is yeah. not really that bad. I got a. So I, I'm not in my house. My my workshop is detached from the house, and since it's been cold, I run the heat out here. And I got a little mouse in my shop, which I thought was just one. While I'm working, and it's like running between my feet every once in a while, so I put up a little uh, a trap out here. 
<laughs> so I, I caught one and then uh, another one's running around in here and this one will not go in the trap. So it's, uh, it's eating my bait, but I can't catch him. And he got into uh, one of the drawers of mine. I had a book from my father for machining for like feeds and speeds and he like chewed halfway through each page of the book already. So I need to catch that bastard. Can't you explain, uh, Wanker, uh, what's, <laughs> what do you mean Just, by that? What, I, something I, that, that me, drives allow, me mad? Allow me to translate. It is the Kurva of the Week. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> perfect, yeah, perfect translate. Uh, kurva of this week is uh, uh, that I need to make a new forge, probably, because uh, I accidentally melted uh, Damascus it in the, in my forge <laughs> so my uh, yeah Matt's gonna <laughs> jump in on this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah because uh, I leave it there uh, and, and go to uh, FedEx courier to, to give him a package and when I come back it was Oops. bright and melted and, uh, and now I have a lot of uh, s s steel uh, in my forge so I need to so, question. Probably. Yeah. Do you um, d d uh, do you know the Apollo Forge? Uh, I've seen the the reel uh, this this week. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, something that's not in the reel. Oh, yeah. Someone is muted. Oh, okay. Never mind. Something that's not in the reel is um, he. We we also make or Brian invented these tiles that you can put on the bottom of your like on your hard mm -hmm. brick that's on the yep. bottom and those tiles they're, they're like uh, they're made out of uh, refractory okay so whenever some goofy like that happens you can just throw up the tile and put a new one in. do you have them um, on, on your website already or yeah or they're not? already on there yeah hmm? okay but did you it's ruin like... your entire forge or well uh it's in uh <laughs> how to say it I have a, something like a uh, steel tile that uh, I put in the forge when I uh, forge Damascus yeah. and take out when I forge uh, normal uh, steel mm -hmm. uh, not to get you know uh, too uh, messy with the borax I use uh, and this is th this tray also melted into the bricks so probably yeah I need to <laughs> I need to make another one. Let's yeah. let's talk about getting an Apollo Forge over your shop. <laughs> okay, how much? <laughs> <laughs> no, we can, we can or, figure or something out. Or oh, this is a this is a Christmas present for me. <laughs> <laughs> how much were these axes again? Sorry. <laughs> so how much is a tomahawk? <laughs> oh, depends. Uh, <laughs> yeah, same with the forge. Depends. Yeah, that's always good conversation starters, right? The pants. <laughs> no, maybe we can work something out, man. Yeah. I'd love to, to see an Apollo Forge in your shop. Yeah, yeah, we definitely can. You see, Keith? Yeah? This is how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> uh. I'll probably end up giving it away again. <laughs> uh, do you need my address? Hmm. Why you want one as well? If you're giving them away, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, I can't keep giving everything away, man. That's a great business model you have. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's a great business plan, yeah. Yeah, not very sustainable. Everyone, yeah. everyone <laughs> likes you. Hmm. What kind of force do you even have? Me? Keith. I... I have uh, no forge right now. I'm all stock removal. Jesus Christ, man! Well, I I got guys I that have was giant power I hammers was and everything with in their shop. Professional here. I know plenty of people that got giant power hammers and all the equipment. I just go over there and make stuff together with them if I need stuff. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not. I'm not ever gonna get into that debate. That you know, stock removal versus forging. It's a heated debate. <laughs> it would be kind of uh, difficult to stock removal of a tomahawk, though. I mean, you could do it, but 
a lot of material to remove. Mm. Now I, I, I kind of want to do it now. <laughs> I mean, it's doable. Actually, I actually see a company that makes uh, racing axes with uh, CNC. Oh. So there's a uh, heavy stock removal there from from, from the uh, CNC machines. What, ki what kind of axes? Uh, racing axes. That's the broad axis that competition uh, made oh, okay. for comp uh, competitions uh, like yep. like the lumber track challenge and like whether yeah, they're trying exactly, to cut stuff exactly. fast yeah. Yeah. yeah okay you know what material they're using for the axis yeah no no not really i believe that's something uh, like uh tool steel because they need to be very uh high hardened yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Apex Ultra. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that think would be expensive. Apex, <laughs> Apex Ultra in those bars, right? I know somebody who has a giant anvil sized block of Apex Ultra in his house who might be able to talk with him. Oh, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Do you know what my, uh, my other company just bought? Keith? Uh, I don't. A big ass CNC uh, milling machine. Nice. What are you going to be milling with it? I don't know yet. Everything that I can, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I have to dive into it. I'm not, I'm not I, I don't have much experience with, uh, with stuff like that now, but, yeah. but we have one, so... It'll be a shame not to use it. Nice. Mm -hmm. I just got little hand tabletop machines, uh, a lathe and a mini mill. Does the job for me though. Yeah, mini mill is fine. Did you see the, um, this is not promotional, but the drill, drill press table from Brian? Uh, yeah, I did. Yep. It's actually a pretty awesome thing, right? With, I uh, like the little not... the little trays and stuff on the side. Yeah, keep them all organized. And then the clamp uh, thingy. I know it's, it's not like it's what some people uh, already made something like that, but he just yeah. yeah. I don't know, it's just so convenient for people to just like, hey, let me get that entire set, and I can. You know, it's brilliant in my opinion. Yeah, I saw a bald man knife and tool was forging out one of the one of those fancy ashtrays. Yeah, did you see what he did? He made it like a mirror. Buffed, yeah, buffed it all up like crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did I hear Brian say that Donald Trump Jr. was actually wanted one? Yeah, I heard what that too. The actual fuck, man. <laughs> That's so great. Making cigar smoking great again, right? So, Pavel, you talked about your, um, that your brother got you kind of into making axes yeah. and stuff he's uh, i checked out his uh, page he's made made some really nice knives too is he still making or no 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 he he moved on and uh he didn't feel like it's sustainable to 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 do do this for a living mm -hmm. uh yeah it's 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 a shame because he was pretty good at it uh, yeah they're really time. nice knives yeah, it runs like... in the family then yeah, actually, yes, because our grand grandfather was also a blacksmith. So, ah, yeah. <laughs> and your your uh, your father too, or no, 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 just oh. grand grandfather. Yeah, skipped some generations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my grandfather was uh, on the war, so he didn't have time to learn oh, yeah, from course. his father. Oh man, yeah, you yeah. guys got got the raw end of of that war, man. Yeah. Holy moly. I read some books about that lately, but that was terrible. Yeah, it was. And the thing that came after wasn't even better because we nope. were in the yep. Soviet Union for like 50 mm -hmm. years on other. So. Yeah, sorry, you, got, you, you guys got fucked on, on all ends. Yeah, his story was, was tough on us. Yeah. But and now, hopefully, because getting now, better. <laughs> yeah, but now and now you make sure that that stuff never happens again. You're a bunch of racists. It's just <laughs> terrible. Uh, you know, if 
if if it's the if it's the cost of uh, uh, yeah, I can be a racist if if, if some chicken yeah, if uh, in US <laughs> calls me that, but uh, we good here. So yeah. there was one more thing that was a joke, but <laughs> there's some truth to all my jokes. Yeah, I don't get easy offended. <laughs> we don't do in Poland. <laughs> so you, uh, you said your great grandfather was a blacksmith a long time ago. Did you get some yeah. old tools and stuff? You probably got hammers and stuff from him. No, I don't have anything because he anything. lost everything. Yeah, after the war, so uh, we don't have anything. My brother cool. just. Uh, started from uh, scrapyards and uh, yeah and I, uh, he make his own uh, power hammer mm -hmm. oh, his oh. own forge yeah, and stuff like this Ooh. with good results because 20 years ago he was like the one of the couple of uh, people that make Damascus in Poland oh, that's awesome man yeah and it was even the beginnings of the internet in Poland, and he didn't even have uh, enough materials uh, available. So yeah. it's pretty impressive, and it was impressive for me always. Uh, maybe that's why I wanted to learn from him. Hmm. Oh, it would be great <laughs> if you if you had like a, like your great grandfather's anvil or something, you know? Yeah, it yeah. would be great, right? <laughs> It's probably uh, they molded that probably and turned it into a tank or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, some bullets. Yeah. Yeah, and my brother was very skilled with making his own tools, so he started like this. Do you know that anvils, like Polish anvils? Um, I don't know if they're Polish, but like uh, anvils from Poland are are uh, they're pretty cheap over there, right? Oh, well, they were like 10 years ago. Right now there's a big boom for uh, uh, for making the craft great again in Poland. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of new knife makers, uh, blacksmiths. Mm -hmm. yeah, so so the, the demand is, is higher again. Demand is high, yeah. Yeah, because I had a, a guy that kept, uh, like, the, he worked in Holland. But every now and then he he when when I, you know they travel back and forth a lot, yeah. And um, so once in a while he he took like uh, some anvils <laughs> with him, yeah. and he he sold them here. Yeah, but that you can find them on the scrapyards for from like dirt cheap. But uh, you you need to get lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the same in France. In in uh, in France. You have all those old castles and stuff. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of anvils uh, there as well. There's like uh, untouched almost. Do you know Will Stelter? Yeah. Uh, he has a movie on, on his YouTube. He visited uh, Italy this oh, year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you see the, the, the castle yes. with like oh, thousands yeah, of yeah, anvils? Yeah. It was like an anvil as big as a building. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thing was crazy, I was man. looking yeah. at this like with Joe dropped on the on the floor. I was like, "Where's the hammer they use that on?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy moly! Castle full of anvils. Pretty yeah, crazy. there's definitely more of them out there too. Full of anvils and old uh, forging tools. Awesome. Italy is not known for it though. Or is it? Or am I talking out of my ass? I don't even know. If, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, the, the Germany was the yeah, of the, course. Germany, Germany and England the, the, was the yep. main source yep. for a good anvils. Yep. And um, um, what was I going to say? Damn it! I forgot. Shit. Uh, <laughs> Couple of years back, there was a, a knife show in Busek in, uh, in Germany, mm -hmm. and there was a like eight years old uh, blacksmith who actually forged uh, anvils. <laughs> oh. Talking to him is was great. Yeah, he was like uh, forging two hundred kilos uh, anvils. 
talk about a, a fucking manly job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like like being a blacksmith is a blacksmith is like manly as, as shit, but yeah, then, like, that's I, another I, level. <laughs> yeah, I forge anvils, then you're like yeah. next level. Yeah. I won't be misgendering uh, that. That's for sure. <laughs> if you do, it'll be the last time. <laughs> now, the forging the anvils, those are really interesting videos if you ever see some of those, how they uh, pick them up and turn them around and the giant it's, kilns and everything. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. I love those. Uh, you know, sometimes you see those videos of those really big power hammers and stuff. Yeah. Oh man, and they they use like a forklift to. to yeah, to, that's I love them. Crazy. Sometimes when I have a break for a coffee, I just put them on the YouTube and <laughs> yeah. see. Insane. You know, it's not helping my work because I don't learn anything with <laughs> forklifting. Um, it's so fucking um, awesome to look but at. But it's awesome, yeah. Hey, hey, Matt. Yeah. Are you gonna torture our poor guest with "Would you rather"? Oh, let me get that. Yes, obviously. <laughs> Did you listen to what's coming now? <laughs> I have a sense of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, for this one, I need to know. Like, are you married or in a relationship, Paul? I'm in a relationship, yeah. I'm going to get married. Uh, are you going to get married? Yeah. Oh, this is, then this is a good one. <laughs> okay, man. Would you rather have diarrhea during your wedding ceremony or have it during your wedding night? <laughs> Definitely during my wedding night because Ooh. my fiance is very forgiving, so yeah. it's better there, that way. <laughs> there won't be a wedding night if you do it at the ceremony. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a pretty easy one. Uh, Okay, Keith, I have one for you too. Oh, come on. <laughs> Go ahead, hit me. You, th you think you were getting This is going to be on. bad. Yeah. Would you rather poop out of your mouth or have someone else poop in your mouth? Oh, nothing. Gun to my head, I'm, I'm gone. Why? <laughs> That's, both of them are horrible. Why wouldn't you just choose like poop out of your mouth? That's way better than someone shitting in your mouth. Uh, At least it's yours, poop, right? <laughs> either, either way, you're eating shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, I, I'm, I'm pooping out of my mouth then. Yeah. Yeah, Into yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Nice. No, that wasn't nice. <laughs> I have so much more. I saved the lists. I saved it years ago, and it's it's still funny. Uh, hey, we got um, some Patreons we want to read out before we end this episode. We still got uh, three Patreons. If anybody wants to join our Patreon list for one euro a month, you can find us at uh, on Patreon at WFI Europe Podcast. Uh, the members we got right now are Christoph Stiegler, Sven Jord Artesian, and Fagerland Bladesmith. And I also wanted to mention um, Martin Huber has a new video. He's moved uh, some things around in his shop. He's got the new rolling mill I talked about on the lap last mm -hmm. episode and uh, two grinders from Tobin uh, in Austria. And mm -hmm. the last uh, guy we had on Baltic Blades is almost at 2,000 followers. He's trying to get to the 2,000 mark before the end of the year, so Go give those guys a follow and check Martin Hoover out on YouTube. And you know what's funny? They both said they would join our patron right after yeah. the show. That's right. They both said it. So yeah. Martin. Man up. Man up. You too, Baltic. <laughs> hey, Pavel. Yeah. It was an awesome hey. episode. Where, where can we... Uh... Where can we find your work for the people who don't know you? Uh, mostly on uh, Facebook and Instagram. So insta instagram.com slash Paps Tomahawks. Same goes for Facebook. Facebook.com slash Paps Tomahawks. He's going to be popping out some reels 
so yeah yeah i need to do it right <laughs> now <laughs> there's apps for that man yeah i know but the thing is i need to have my telephone in my uh forge uh or at least somebody who gonna do this movies for me so but yeah. it's it's like um okay i need a second person in my workshop that's yeah that's about... well um do you know what it is like making bad reels is better than don't than, than making no reels yeah 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 that's that's a, that's a and nowadays with these TikTok apps you know like like um, CapCut and PixelCut and InShot and all those apps it's just you you make some crappy videos it, it doesn't matter of what and then you upload yep. them into that app you press a button and it'll make the reel for you yeah i need to stop making excuses uh, but and start uh -huh. doing this <laughs> Fucking work for it. Yeah, I prefer to make things like tomahawks and yeah, 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 then move yeah. move for another project than making movies about it. But yeah, yeah that's it's... the time we are living. And yeah, uh, definitely. And maybe when uh, Matt delivers the forge, he can show you how to do it and make a video for you. <laughs> yeah, gonna have to, right? The forge and, and the grinder, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I'll yeah. come visit your shop if you buy them both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shipping costs. <laughs> yeah, only like 1200 uh, kilometers, right? <laughs> oh. I've driven to Poland before. Yeah, I driven drive to Holland every year, so. Oh yeah. The... Are you going to Solingen? I no. I know the Keith is trying to end the episode, but fuck him. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Solingen's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, is it? Are you going? Uh, I get invites every year, but I never show their uh, my works. Why not? Well, actually, a couple years back, the show was running by the other, uh, by the uh, Messer Maher Museum, right? Yeah, yeah. And they cherry-picked makers that can show uh, their works and I applied like I don't know 10 years ago and get rejected because uh, I wasn't making any knives and obviously mm. it's, it's, it's a knife show uh, after that some other people uh, take over this uh, show and they send me invite and I just never uh, respond for this mm. interesting Maybe yeah, I it's, a, it's, a, it's a good, it's a big show. I think uh, this year it's even bigger. Last year, I, I, can't, I don't know the numbers exactly, but there was like 170 exhibitors, something like that. And like over 300 people attended. Uh, 300, uh, 3,000, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Over the two days. Nice. So. Right. Yeah, and it's a quality show because there's great makers over there. Yeah. Isn't it and... the biggest in Europe? Yes. Mm. Yeah. You should come, uh, Pavel. I probably should. Maybe next year I will have a bit more time for that. This year was crazy, and two pandemic years was right. Hmm. Are you going to the Dutch it's... one? Um, yes, I will. Hmm. Maybe you'll win that prize again. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> it's not a big show, but I like the the, uh, the people there and. Yeah, they're old school, like the 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 ones that uh, arrange that show. Yeah, old school people. I also like the Jean Bleu in Belgium. Oh, I never. Uh, never also, the small show, but yeah, they have a great beer <laughs> over there. Yeah, in Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they know how to drink beer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What is uh, what do you guys drink over there? In Poland. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of crafts beer right now. Uh, this, oh, yeah, the whole beer I... revolution is hitting hard on us. Oh, man, I, f I wish I remember those beers. Damn it. I, I had a, a Polish co-worker for the longest time, and he always took crates of beer. Uh, what me. type of the beers you drink? I can yeah, they were like the, the bigger bottles. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's not big for you, but I think I can find them in pictures somewhere. But j let's keep talking because if... Just tell me the style you like and I will take a lot of different <laughs> uh, on the show. <laughs> to, to, to. These were awesome beers, man. Maybe... Yeah, so we drink a lot of that and you probably think we are drinking vodka here. Uh, yeah, a lot. This guy also drank a lot of vodka. Yeah, we, we don't actually. We... No, but he did. And uh, <laughs> especially when um, when we were um, uh, like having dinner, he invited us for dinner. And then after every bite, he just and he kept filling my shot and it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are good at uh, drinking at the parties. That's that's <laughs> fair to say, but yeah, normally just beer is okay. And a lot of cocktail bars here in Poland right now. So. Yeah, that was the thing. When I first moved here, everybody wanted me to try uh, the Austrian schnapps. Everybody made their own schnapps and you had to try it every time you went somewhere. <laughs> Schnapps. I don't drink that stuff. I'm just a beer guy. Only beer? Yeah. I can't hang the whole night if you start drinking that hard stuff. You know, I, I, I don't drink a lot anymore, but what I always used to do, and that's just the worst thing that you can do, is that when I couldn't take any more beer, I would go over to like gin tonics and stuff. And whiskey yeah. and oh man that's such a stupid thing to do yeah we also like good whiskey here in poland so i'm drinking whiskey right now if you uh invite uh trollski <laughs> <laughs> he's a uh, big big on the uh, whiskey he even made uh, uh well not him but he has uh, uh knife makers uh, whiskey made for him with his brand. <laughs> Man. Matt, you'll have to try that. Yeah, definitely. We actually need to get him on here as well. Well, I know he's uh, very open to, to stuff like this. He's not shy, not even remotely. No, so. <laughs> no, 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 he's not shy. <laughs> I saw him at the night show as well. Talked to him for a bit also. Yeah, great guy. He's been doing it for years as well, right? Yeah. And fun fact is that he actually started with my brother here in uh, Forge. No yes. shit. Yeah. I can show you a picture in, uh, of the, on the Facebook if you would like to see it. Of them? Where yeah, send it. Of us three, actually. Oh, send it to Keith. He'll put it on the... Oh, maybe yeah. I'm saying something, but he's going to put it somewhere for this show. Yeah, <laughs> you, you want to say it right now or save it for later and uh, you can just send it to me on uh, on instagram okay right i'll use it as the picture for the show episode <laughs> yeah it's a funny picture you know huh. i don't know how old is it I, I think everybody when they first started making knives was watching trollski videos yeah yeah he was very fast uh to the to the youtube so it works for him very nicely. He had a great uh, movies like uh, uh, how to make a knife from uh, scrap, uh, scrapyard materials and stuff. Man, have you seen some of his videos too? Or... What, Trollski? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, 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 I wouldn't want to say every everyone, but yeah, a lot. I don't know. He's just. It's, it feels like he's always been there, you know. Yeah. Kind of legendary. Okay, I have the beer brand, but yeah. you have to. What is it? You have to help me. How I say this? It's Namisro. Namiswoof. Yeah. Probably that. <laughs> that was some good stuff, man. Whoa, if that was good for you, so... <laughs> oh, that's, that's not, is it garbage? <laughs> uh, it's like uh, Heineken in, 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 in oh, Holland. It was, uh, I, I think the, um, the... That's like our basic uh, 
basic stuff. So like if you are open, yeah. Uh, the 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 craft uh, here is on enormous level here, so I can mm. show you a couple of better ones. <laughs> Definitely. Take take them to the Dutch knife show, man. I will. I will. Okay. Uh, I owe a bottle for for uh, uh, organizers for. Uh, price so <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know how it goes <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah man that's a great picture man <laughs> yeah so you i'm in the how front old is that? yeah yeah obviously well i am here like nine 16 <laughs> no oh, yeah, I've seen that I'm, picture. Ju I'm just short so it's <laughs> i think it was like maybe i was 16 years old Trotsky with a glasses and my brother. Yeah, those glasses are awesome. <laughs> my brother a little bit blurry in the back, yeah. but yeah. That's how it started for us. It's great, man. Kind yeah. of legendary. <laughs> what does your brother do now? Uh, Kydex holsters for guns. Let's see, it's like I, I think it's always very, it's very awesome that like you never get like far away it's always like in the same realm or something you know yeah he probably would like to get back to the knife making but uh he has two kids yeah, uh, so. yeah and one is need uh 24 7 uh, care because uh, he has uh, uh special needs well yeah he's uh mm, how to say it in in English? Uh, muscular atrophy uh, disease. Oh. So yeah. Muscular dystrophy. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> That's terrible. Yep. Pretty much. So he can afford to uh, get lost in the uh, in the workshop for too no, no. too long. Yeah. No. And the uncertainty of. Uh... Like income, income yeah. and stuff, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's precisely what, what keeps that him getting, away from Is it. that getting better in Poland now? Because I, I know that for some for some years it was terrible as well. Like being able to, to find a good paying job over there. Uh, in Poland right now? Yeah. Uh, we have one of the biggest... Uh, yeah, now, after COVID. No. But I, I yeah. like in the years before that, I at least that's what the guys, the Polish guys over here said. That it was terrible over there. No, if you were really skilled, uh, it wasn't bad. You know? Are you are you saying the shitty Polish workers come over here? <laughs> I won't go <laughs> as far as that, but <laughs> you definitely uh, offer better money. Yeah, that's when it compares to Poland. Uh, yeah. Poland prices because uh, usually the people who works abroad takes this money and come back to Poland and spend it here so yeah yeah it's good exchange ratio yeah. yeah yeah it was actually pretty terrible because the company I worked at at the time I, I was like leading uh, parts of the, the like the welding uh, area of that yeah. company and so I had some welders that that um, I had to, to lead and um, so at first we we had them through one of these agencies you know but yeah, those yeah, are really fucking criminal. Yeah. I'll call them out right, right here. Those are fucking animals. Yeah, I was working in uh, after my f uh, high school. I spent uh, 10 weeks in Holland working for the agency. Oh, my and God. And they're just taking like half of my salary. <laughs> yeah, and they keep it from you. Yeah. But Do you know what? Only... Yeah. Yeah, they, you know why they do that? So they can control when you go, come and go. Yeah, they always yes, say yeah. like uh, you. You always owe, they always owe you money, you know. And yeah. then they did the most ridiculous shit because we we were paying uh, like thirty seven euros per hour, and they were only getting like twelve or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then yeah, they but... also had to pay for the room, which they put like twelve Polish guys in in one room. Yeah, it's just so it's like modern slavery. It's, it's, exactly. It was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So what I did is I just told those two Polish guys that that um, work for us. I was like, you go back to Poland right now, 
you start your own company and then we'll hire you for a year. Like yeah, that's, directly. That, that's great approach. Yeah. Yeah. Did they do yeah, it? No. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Because nobody is leeching uh, on, on your work. So. Yeah. And, and one of them even um, like in like where I in my house, I also have like another uh, small building ne next to it that used to be uh, an office. Uh, we turned that into a house and he just uh, lived there. And eventually, like uh, every holiday, his family, uh, he came with this entire uh, like family, his wife and his kids and everything. We became sort, sort of friends. Yeah. It's great. Is he the guy who gave you Namiswu beer? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that, that, <laughs> the, the brewery was close to his house or something. Okay, right. Damn it, he fooled me. He told me it was good beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not bad, you know. So, yeah, yeah. But definitely you can find something nicer here. What do you guys think? Was that... That is, that is show. Yeah, going to wrap it up. Yep. <laughs> Powell wants to leave. You hear that? No, no. I can't. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I just think we should meet uh, in uh, real life with a glass of the beer somewhere. Well, then, then visit Solingen. Yeah, we'll both be there. And this is uh, next year, or uh, when is it? Uh, I think it's when May seventeenth, I believe, uh, in May. I know. I have to ask, ask my assistant, <laughs> Keith. When is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, off the top, oh, oh. <laughs> top of my head, I think it's the seventeenth. Yeah, I think so. Or do you, uh, well, yeah. there's plenty of time for for me to prepare for my uh, if, if 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 it's maybe right. why not? Like yeah. to get a booth or just visit. Uh, I prefer to get a table and show my yeah. works because yeah, uh, of course. it's pretty pricey for me to book a hotel and go there yeah. with yeah, yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, 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 when I'm doing this, I might as well so try to sell something there. I would tell you if you think that you're gonna do it to book a hotel, even if you don't show up, book a hotel now, one that you can cancel without having to pay, okay. because the they will be booked out uh, quickly. I okay. had the last room in the in the hotel uh, actually next to uh, to the to the show. To the show, that's an awesome yeah. spot. You just walk across the parking lot and you're there. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna look into. It. Yeah. Do that's, it, man. That's a, that's a good yeah, idea. Actually. Definitely. I'd like to meet uh, meet more more people like uh, that that are in the in the space. Uh, Zollingen is one day uh, show or two day show. Two days, yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Yeah, I like this today's yeah. shows because yeah. you met a lot of knife makers and get to talk after the show. Yeah, exactly. Actually, uh, if you have if you have a table uh, the second day, so sa uh, the first day, Saturday night, they do like a buffet meal, and all the people who had a table um, oh. are in the same room meeting together. You get to meet all the other makers and material supplies and stuff. It's a great place. Yeah, to that's great. That's great. Meet the up. Busek show was also like this. And I like it. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm actually in a in a in a WhatsApp group now with some Dutch knife makers like a lot of them. And um, they are all going to go, I think, or a lot of them are going to go. It's, it's mostly like younger, uh, younger makers, but um, yeah. There'll be some Dutch uh, Dutch knife makers there this year. Yeah, maybe that's the plan. I will go to uh, Netherlands on April. Yeah. Um, April. Yeah. April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe maybe I should offer Keith a, a spot on my table as well. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> you got a spot you on your table. On? I will <laughs> get a table if you say like I I I I would go then I'll get the table tomorrow. When is it? April what? Um, uh, you have to ask your assistant. Yeah. Hey, Keith. <laughs> send, me the, send, send, uh, send me the info after the show, and I will uh, see if I can get there. If I'm not doing anything that weekend, definitely. I like to go as many shows as I can. Awesome. Let's do that. I'll get a table. 
because I was I was on the fence about it, but I'm I'm fuck it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> that means uh, I'm gonna drive to Holland with all my materials. That's a that's a hike. Well, that's a that's a pretty 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 reasonable hike, yeah. But hey, you want to be a like the big knife knife material guy? I am. You go there. Yeah. Well, we. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great! Two shows. And then um, we all should go to Blade Show. Yeah, that's a dream. You know, I. I'm, I'm going this year, like yeah, the next I, the next one. Yeah. I booked uh, I booked a hotel already. Did you now? I did. Yeah. Are you going to Blade I, Show? I want to really bad. I've been trying for the past couple of years. Um, the problem is, is I fly with my family for the whole month of July um, to visit my, my oh. family in America. So I would go to the show, come home for like a week and then go back again. Uh, so it's there. pretty much, so, yeah. <laughs> See, that's easy to say. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm also going, man. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be taking my dad, which is fucking awesome. You need to consider your carbon footprint on this trip. <laughs> yeah. Shut the front door, man. Yeah. Uh, what what would Greta e do in the... <laughs> you just pay extra money for that and uh, then everything's good. There's no pollutions if you pay more money. Oh, okay. That's how it works. <laughs> just, you know, for, you know, that's what they say. The solutions. It's just eat more beef because you'll kill cows, like more cows will die and everyone knows that. All the cow farts, that's what actually is killing yeah, that's, uh, planet Earth. That's the real problem. Cow farts, man. <laughs> I love this video. There's a video about, um, there's a guy just, he's, he's saying like, uh, like um, all that cows do is eat grass and fart. You yeah. know, and they're wasting, and they're, they're a waste like on the planet. And then the guy said, like, like uh, that's exactly what vegans are, <laughs> are doing. <laughs> <laughs> they eat grass uh, and they fart. Are you saying we should kill all the vegans? I'm not advocating for killing anyone, but yes. Uh, bleep it. Do, no, don't bleep it. Do, Fuck it. Do you know who Ron Swanson is? You ever yeah. heard that name before? Yeah, so there was there was a funny TV show that he was on, and there's a like a little skit. He goes into a supermarket, and there's this vegan guy. He's got vegan vegan um, flavored bacon, and he he like picks out the bacon with tongs and gives oh, him a that's piece. Oh, from yeah. Uh, the office. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and he and he's like. He's like, thank you. And he turns, drops it into the trash barrel, and he's like, can I have another? <laughs> and he gives another one. He drops it in the trash barrel. <laughs> I absolutely love that shit. There's also yeah. one with that little kid that says like, uh, there's like an environmentalist and a, or, or a Democrat and a vegan or something. Um, they both jump down a cliff, and then who wins? And then the uh, the kids society says, <laughs> society yeah yeah. <laughs> Great. I love yeah. that shit. I love it. So you guys can send all your complaints to DIY Europe to Matt Bicker, he'll take care of that for you. <laughs> Which like I'll be managing the complaint department? Yeah, you didn't I put you on the second the second episode as complaint department. I guess you didn't check it out. I did. I saw I I, I didn't know what it meant, but I know. <laughs> okay. That's why everyone was bitching. Yeah. Oh, no one even sent me a message. Fucking lazy assholes. I want to give a big shout out to the guys at um, the Fire and Steel podcast. They actually did an episode, and they yes, it they did. I mean I that, that to it, yet. it was like thirty-five minutes long, and yeah. thirty of it was them reading out patrons. It was. Did you listen to it? Yeah. Was yeah. it shit? Uh, they have some really bad internet problems, delays and stuff. So, so it was basically Toby blaming Honor and Honor blaming Toby. Yeah, <laughs> and then one one would talk and the other one would answer the question from five minutes ago. And <laughs> uh, I love these guys. They're, I keep giving them. 
some shit that I love. Yeah, Anna is actually the one who recorded the Wanker of the Week intro for us, if nobody guessed it yet. Let them hear it again. Welcome to Wanker of the Week. 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 <laughs> That's awesome stuff, man. We <laughs> should get more of that uh, stuff. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm working on it. Yeah? Yep. We need some distinct voices. I'm working on a, a distinct one. You'll like it. I'm sure Brian will like it too. Okay. Let's wrap That's it up. It's a wrap? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, man. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us, Pavel. We had a great talk. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're, yeah. Uh, you're awesome, man. <laughs> yep. Thanks, man. Go check him out, you guys, on Instagram. He doesn't have enough followers yet, just nine and a half thousand, so yeah, that's be sure not to, nearly be sure enough. To add him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ace. Appreciate uh, it. All right. We will talk with you guys again next Tuesday. Bye everyone. Bye. See you. Bye bye.